This is the Chapter 16 lecture, and we will end the semester discussing nutrition and aging. Very important for future nurses and dietitians, since the elderly make up the greatest proportion of patients in most settings. You can read a bit on aging. It is inevitable. We are biologically programmed to age. And we've seen some changes in statistics over the years, some of it good, more recently not so good. So what we've seen is the lifespan, of course, has increased through the years. More recently, though, um, this has not been the case. I want to describe what compression of morbidity is, although I don't think this corresponding chart does a great job of putting that into a picture. Compression of morbidity, though, is very important to understand because it is our goal in educating uh, the population on lifestyle as they get older. Compression of morbidity means that we squeeze the health problems into a smaller period of time. It's not the case for most individuals in this country today. So as you get older, most people are hit by chronic diseases in adulthood, even before they become elderly, then more pile on as they get older. And we have a very good healthcare system that helps us manage those conditions to some degree, but the individual is dealing with health problems over a long period of years, which does take a toll on quality of life for many. Compression of morbidity is the ideal. We would like people to stay healthy through most of their life and then have the period of illness be compressed, be a few years. There are many factors that affect this and affect how we age. They're not all under our control for sure, so read through them, but there are a good many that are under our control. So lifestyle factors, um, need to be addressed. Nutrition and exercise, how you handle stress. You can, uh, you're going to take a listen to this video as part of your discussion. So how can we slow aging? We will actually look at the Blue Zone research in our discussion, but here are some tips. These factors seem to, in the case of slowing aging, we're talking about pushing back ill health, keeping older people healthy, getting enough sleep, eating well-balanced meals, managing weight, and read down the list. There's also good research to show that restriction of calories does have an impact on laboratory animals, keeping them healthier and living longer, and we're seeing the same in populations of human beings as well. Now, how applicable is this? I'm not sure. There are those who have chosen to trim their calories below what would be considered a recommended number in an effort to extend their lives. Most Americans eat far too many calories. Perhaps this would remind us to get our, our calorie consumption in check. You may have studied this a little bit in your biology classes, but aging takes a toll on a number of systems. And some of these uh, factors influence our nutritional status. So be sure to read through the text on this carefully, because if we're working with elderly people and um, improving their nutritional status, we need to understand why it is that, for instance, they've lost their appetite. They're putting more salt on their food. They um, are gaining weight. All of these factors can be explained if you understand the impact of aging. Body composition changes. It's something called sarcopenia, a loss of muscle mass and strength. You see that reflected in the cross sections here of these thighs. The elderly woman has more fat, less lean. And you see it also reflected here in this chart. As you get older, more fat, less muscle. And this impacts your, your calorie needs as we'll look at. Before we go on though, it's really important to understand that physiological factors are, are 
fundamental to understanding aging and nutrition, but so are additional socioeconomic um, factors as well. So things like having less money, being more dependent, um, being housebound, being depressed. This is all very, very important. Now, great video here because we're seeing that what you eat does also impact your mental health. And in this fact, in this research, they showed that following a DASH diet lessened depression in elderly individuals. The consequences of malnutrition are many and snowballing. So we talked about sarcopenia. We talked about um, the fact that, or we haven't, but we will now, when you have less strength, you're less able to perhaps go grocery shopping or prepare your own food, and that could lead to a decline in nutrients. Malnutrition can impact the immune function and increase illness. Something that's really important to take note of is that nutrient needs for older adults are in every case but one, the same or higher when compared to younger adults. The case, the exception to that rule is iron for women because they're not menstruating. So what this means is in light of needing fewer calories for these reasons, Older adults need to make sure to eat a nutrient-dense diet. They actually need a bit more protein. Okay, we're looking at providing more protein per gram for older adults. They need enough fiber to prevent constipation. They need plenty of water. Okay, it's one of the overlooked nutrients, commonly an issue with older adults because thirst is not a reliable indicator anymore. Body water composition uh, drops. You have kidneys that are less able to regulate fluid balance. Um, and that sets you up for a number of problems due to dehydration. Dehydration is the single cause, the most important cause, most common cause for confusion in hospitalized elderly patients. So it's important that older people stay hydrated. There are a number of vitamins and minerals that are key nutrients because they're commonly deficient. We've talked about B12 needing stomach acid in order for it to be absorbed and stomach acid declines in aging. We've talked about vitamin D deficiency being very common. Older adults also have skin and kidneys which aren't as efficient at producing active vitamin D. We know that um, iron deficiency is less common in the elderly, but it's still relatively common because of some blood loss and in some cases poor absorption. Zinc is an issue that can cause problems with the skin or decreased taste. And calcium, of course, is very important for preventing a um, increase in bone loss. So a diet for older adults needs to be healthy. It needs to be nutrient dense. There are a couple of different ways of looking at this. I really like the Tufts plate because it is focused on the elderly with things like easy to store fruits and vegetables. It's fine to have frozen. It's fine to have canned. Low cost protein sources like peanut butter and eggs and beans. Take a read of this as well. Physical activity continues to be important. We just need to make sure we tailor it to that individual's ability level. This is Tai Chi, which is very good for strength and balance. And older adults tend to consume a lot of medications because they tend to have more health issues. These medications at times get in the way of nutritional status by decreasing absorption, causing GI problems, interactions, etc. All right, so I wanted to focus in on a couple of nutrition related concerns and their links um, to diet. Vision declines, many different reasons for that but here are two of them and what we know is that oxidative stress can increase the risk for cataracts and macular degeneration so a diet that's higher in antioxidants seems to lower the risk lots of fruits and vegetables for sure 
Here are some more tips for lowering the risk of macular degeneration and cataracts. And you'll see that most of this, if not all, overlaps with our guidelines for the population at large. Arthritis is not uncommon. Check out the links for sure. What we're seeing with arthritis, a couple of things. There are many different types of arthritis. Osteoarthritis is kind of the wear and tear arthritis. Overweight really makes this worse. So managing weight is important. Exercise kind of juices up the joints. So exercise is helpful in managing the symptoms and increasing comfort around arthritis. With rheumatoid arthritis, we're seeing that a change in fats to more of the anti-inflammatory fats, more omega-3s, does have some effect on reducing inflammation. Be sure to read this article. And finally, the aging brain. Um, Alzheimer's and other forms of cognitive decline with aging are absolutely heartbreaking. So is there any way to lessen the impact? Amazingly, there is. We now know that diet can slow the decline and lower the risk. Um, this is something that we hesitated saying for a number of years, but we've got pretty good evidence now. Be sure to read about this. The diet that is good for the brain has been described through much of this course, but you see here lots of antioxidants, lots of omega-3s, not going overboard on calories or sugar, getting plenty of exercise, and staying engaged intellectually and socially is very important. There's so much research on nutrition and lifestyle and brain health, especially for the elderly. I've included a couple of links here that you can read. The MIND diet is talked about quite a bit because this diet has been shown to lower the risk by about 50%, which is amazing. So these are the tenets of that diet, the basics, um, whole grains and vegetables, wine if you drink it, nuts, blueberries, chicken or fish and beans. Um, I actually try to adhere to this a little because I also have as my model um, the uh, Mediterranean diet. So the Mediterranean diet looks a whole lot like that. In fact, this is the Mediterranean dash hybrid. Okay, and here are the foods to avoid. We need to understand, and there was recently an article on this that was very alarming, that our elderly, um, it's not uncommon that they are food insecure. And that food insecurity can lead to a whole snowballing effect with regards to health problems. The determined checklist is a way to spot that earlier instead of later. There's a test question on this checklist, so be sure to take a read. We also need to understand the resources that are out there. They are often under the umbrella of the Older Americans Act, but of course there's also the SNAP program and the Older American Act covers Meals on Wheels and Seniors Farmers Markets Nutrition Program. Uh, shared meals or congregate meals are very important for the elderly, not only to improve their intake, but also to provide socialization. So there are a, a number of senior centers in Philadelphia that provide these very low cost meals for seniors um, senior adults and also allows them to engage in a number of activities. And finally, at the end of our topics for this entire semester, we look at long-term care. In long-term care, we have more problems, but we have also more complicated and sicker residents. So residents with a number of chronic health problems and also with um, 
perhaps some cognitive decline as well. So we need to address those factors that can make things worse. Take a read of these. Very often nurses and dietitians can make changes in these areas. We want the dining room to be cheerful. We want to have enough personnel on board to feed the residents. We want to make sure they're getting appetizing food. And we need to be aware that many of them have high nutrient needs. Okay, so there you go. You did it. Ooh.